Hey guys, Alex Hamilton, U-Rise Education. Right now we're standing on the steps of Duke University's famous chapel, and today we're gonna to take you all around the beautiful campus. Let's get into it. Built during the early 1930s, Duke's Chapel is a hallmark of the university's Gothic architecture and a fixture of Abel Quad, named in honor of Julian Abel, one of the country's earliest prominent African-American architects and the designer of Duke's West Campus. Adjacent the chapel are the Departments for Divinity and the Flowers Building, which handles student affairs. Along the eastern edge of the quad, you'll find the Reuben Cook Building, which holds the Departments of Neuroscience and Psychology, as well as the Social Sciences Building. Along the northern tip of the quad is Davison Hall, part of the Duke Clinic Complex of the highly ranked Duke Medical System. Facing southwest on the quad, we can see on the right the old chemistry and language buildings. Walking back toward the chapel, we can take a peek into Perkins Library, one of the university's largest on campus. Nearby is the Broadhead Center for Campus Life, which holds several university eateries. Speaking of which, behind is Bryan University Center, which holds other dining facilities, as well as the campus bookstore. Across the walk is Page Auditorium, which hosts various campus performances and musicals. Continue walking south along the quad to find various undergraduate residence halls. Another piece of unique architecture you'll find along the quad is the Allen Building, which is the university's administrative center for the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences. Drive south from West Campus and you'll find Duke's Athletic Complex. Here is Blue Devil Tower and Wallace Wade Stadium. The Blue Devils play in Division I Athletics in the ACC alongside their rival, the University of North Carolina. Just by looking at the magnificence of this athletic complex, you can tell that the Blue Devils have a rich history in athletics. Near the tennis courts is Carr Gymnasium, where the fencing and wrestling teams compete. You'll also find the Yo Football Center. Duke basketball is well known for being one of the leading programs in the country. All around here you'll find facilities for athletes and regular students alike, leaving plenty of things to do on campus. Speaking of things to do, a walk back north will bring you to the famous Sarah P. Duke Gardens. Being one of the top public gardens in the country, the Duke Gardens will grant you access to some of the most beautiful flora in North Carolina. Students interested in biology, environmental science, and agriculture can stroll through for some extracurricular learning. Other students who just want to relax will have no shortage of paths to traverse or things to see if they want to decompress from a hard day of studying. Duke is one of the nation's most sustainable campuses, with numerous offices having earned a green workplace certification. Duke also has dozens of clubs and organizations dedicated to the environment and sustainability for students who want to make their community and the earth a better place.
walking through the gardens, you might even get lucky and catch a glimpse of some of the fauna, like koi fish and cranes. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous, the campus is just a few hours away from the Atlantic Ocean to North Carolina's famed Emerald Isle. With all of this being said, it's no wonder why Duke University is ranked among the top colleges in the United States every single year. So, great, we have a lot of information about Duke, the university, its campus, so what now? Well, if you're looking to go to Duke, then we have to talk about standing out, especially on the essays, since last year, less than 6% of applicants were admitted. And this leads us to the 200 word required Why Duke essay. So looking through this essay, you'll see that you have to showcase what exactly it is you like about Duke University. You also see there that it asks, have you taken a tour? And even if you haven't taken an in-person tour, you could say that you've taken a virtual tour because with me, you have. And honestly, nobody's going to hold it against you if you haven't had the chance to take an in-person tour to the university. There's so many factors at play here. Um, you know, especially with the pandemic, with travel expenses, with a lot of things going on. Not everybody's going to be able to see a college in person, but by doing your due diligence and researching using the resources available to you, you can learn more about the school. And if they know that, they're going to appreciate it. Another thing I want to point out here in the essay prompt is the wording, why is Duke a good match for you? In other words, what can you specifically as an applicant give to the university? As a student attending a university, it's a two-way street. The university will give you something and you're going to give something back to the university. So if you're interested in Duke's highly ranked biological sciences program, then you should talk about what you have done in high school so far in that domain. Have you been involved in any kind of competitions? Science Olympiad, right? Have you been involved in any kind of research? Is there a topic that you want to research in the future using Duke's resources? That's what you can list. Similarly, let's say you want to attend Duke for economics, which is another popular and highly ranked program there. Then talk about what you've done so far in high school. Have you taken, you know, the AP Micro Macro exam, for instance? Have you taken any um, business competitions? Have you participated in any of these activities? If you're interested in entrepreneurship or economics, what kinds of views for your future self do you have and how will Duke help you meet those goals? So ultimately you could use the resources in videos like these where we actually go through campus and take a look at the environment combined with what you find on the university website, whether that's courses, clubs, professors, research, whatever it is that you want to reference, the information should be there in that 200 word essay. In addition to that, Duke has two optional essays. Now, the website says that they're optional, but for a university as competitive as Duke, you're going to want to write them. The fact is, having additional space to write about yourself, even though there's no guarantee it's going to help you, it can't hurt you. You have two additional opportunities here to share some information maybe unique to yourself, something else that can help you stand out. And even if those essays aren't guaranteed to give you a leg up in the application, they certainly won't hurt. Here's the first one. So at first glance, this is very similar to the typical community essay, like something we saw on the University of Michigan application. However, the other part you want to be aware of is the perspective. What kind of perspective can you bring? And as we've seen, Duke is a school with very fierce school spirit. So keep that in mind when you're writing about what kind of perspective you've gained, whether it was from volunteering or starting a club, and then how could you bring it to Duke? For instance, we've seen Duke has a strong tradition of athletic culture. Now, let's say if you've been active in your community with helping those with disabilities. And one of the ways to do so is through sports, maybe sports mentoring or playing with those who aren't as able as other people and helping them really get out and express themselves through athletics. That's something that's really cool and it's something that you could share while also conveying to the university that you are gonna be someone who can contribute this idea of helping others through athletics. Or 
as we saw, we took a very long, beautiful walk through the gardens. If you're someone who through community service has learned about sustainability, has learned about environmental protection, maybe you pick up trash around your local community, you can talk about this experience and what that has taught you, what perspective that has given you. Then you can showcase how that perspective will allow you to contribute to a campus like Duke. Lastly, in addition to the community essay, there's an optional essay about identity specifically. Here it is. Now, to many of you, this prompt might not be as conducive as the other optional prompt in terms of giving you something really exciting to talk about, but maybe it can. Based off your application materials, the admissions committee is already going to know about your grades. They're already going to know about the activities that you've been involved in. So if there is something else that you wanted to share regarding your identity specifically, uh, your race, your ethnicity, your gender or sexual orientation, these are things that you can mention as well. Now, what if you don't have a particular identity trait that you think is worthwhile to share? Well, going back to the example of helping somebody with disabilities, maybe you could share about having interacted with somebody of one of those identity groups that is worth sharing about in your view. In such a way, you have the opportunity to not only talk about your relationship and how you've helped one of these individuals, but you could also talk about then what you have learned about your own identity and how you've reflected as a result. And that's it. So if you have any questions about what we discussed here today, about Duke, about these essays, please feel free to let me know. And what school do you wanna hear about next? Even if I don't have the chance to visit in person, I'd love to do a video talking about the essays and how to respond to those kind of prompts. So let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.